AP Top 25 is out, so let's break it down. There are actually no changes in the Top 5. Clemson, Alabama, Ohio State, Notre Dame, and Georgia. But I will make note, the first place votes, just a four difference now between Clemson and Alabama, substantially lower. And the total point difference is just two. Alabama almost took over the top spot this week. Moving on, the Cincinnati Bearcats. Yes, in football, they're number six. The Aggies of A&M, they're number seven, thanks to their head-to-head -head win over Florida. Undefeated programs are at nine and ten. BYU with seven wins and Wisconsin with ten. The Miami Hurricanes are number five and Oregon will, or number 11, excuse me, and Oregon will finally get their opportunity to play some football next week. They still have yet to play a game, but they're number 12. Surprising Indiana is number 13, Oklahoma State at 14. And how about Coastal Carolina? Six and oh, and they crack the top 15 because 2020 is absolutely wild. Marshall also undefeated. They are 16. A couple Big 12 programs here in Iowa State and Oklahoma, both at 4-2 and two at 17 and 19, respectively. Boise State, they're playing some football now. They are number 21. Texas is back in the top 25 at 4-2. and two. They're number 22. Michigan plummets after a disastrous loss to the hands of rival Michigan State. They're 1-1 one one now. Auburn's 24. And then rounding out the top 25 is Liberty. Yeah, how about that one? They're undefeated at 6-0. and oh. All right, some teams receiving votes here just outside that top 25. Northwestern was the top vote getter. 12 back of actually cracking that top 25. Louisiana, North Carolina, a surprisingly 0-2 Penn State team. Tulsa also getting some votes as well. Army and Kansas State, West Virginia, Utah, Washington. Kansas State plummets significantly after a loss at the hands of West Virginia. Also getting some votes here, Purdue, Virginia Tech, South, or San Diego State, Arizona State, App State as well. And somehow Michigan State is getting votes. I know 2020 is a weird year. Just me personally, if you got your butt beat by Rutgers, regardless of bouncing back the very next week and finding a way to take down Michigan, I don't think Michigan State should be getting any votes. And yet here they are with four votes this week. Cal, the fewest point getter, with three. All right, one more time here to the top 25, a little bit more in-depth this time. Clemson almost blew it against Boston College, but they were able to hold on and pick up a critical win. We'll talk more about Clemson in a second. Alabama, they rolled against Mississippi State. Ohio State had a top 20 matchup this week against the Penn State Nittany Lions, and although Sean Clifford looked better this week, the ground game was more or less non-existent, and Justin Fields continued to look like the makings of a top five NFL draft pick and one of the Heisman Trophy frontrunners as well. Now, Ohio State did not get a single first place vote this week. They all went to Clemson, and they all went to Alabama. Do you guys agree with that, though? Should the Buckeyes be ranked number one? I will make this the pinned comment on today's video because I want you guys to have the chance to get your votes in. Type a simple one for yes or two for no. If you get that ad break here on YouTube, scroll down and get your votes in. All right, Notre Dame, they're number four. Georgia is number five. I do want to talk more about Clemson and kind of as a result, Notre Dame as well. Remember, no Trevor Lawrence this week for Clemson against Boston College. So instead, they go to true freshman DJ Uwe Ungulale or DJU if you just want to have a lot easier time pronouncing it. A little bit maybe a rough start at times for the youngster, but he looked incredible overall. Looked the part of the hyped five-star true freshman quarterback, the next in the ever-growing line of Clemson quarterback success stories, which kind of rapidly becoming quarterback you. Now, Trevor Lawrence is not expected to play against Notre Dame. That's what head coach Dabo Sweeney had to say. So now it is Clemson on the road in a top five matchup without their Heisman Trophy favorite, or at least front runner, in Trevor Lawrence. He is out for this game. DJ Uwe Ungalale will play instead. A critical game for both of these programs. This could almost end up serving as a CFB or CFP elimination game, although I wonder if Clemson loses narrowly without Trevor Lawrence and then blows out the rest of the teams, will the CFP committee say, ah, it's because they didn't have their quarterback. We're going to put him in anyway with or without Notre Dame. I think it's a possibility. So this, I think, is the must-watch game of the week next week. So who do you guys have in this one? Let me know what you think. Type C-L-E-M for Clemson or simple N-D for Notre Dame. 
All right, we mentioned Georgia here at number five. They've been pretty impressed overall with the way that they've done so far this year, outside of, of course, a bad showing against Alabama. Again, I wanted to make this note again. Clemson, Alabama, the only two teams with first place votes, and the total point uh, totals here in the AP Top 25 separate those two by two votes. Incredibly narrow there. Could change next week. And we'll let you guys know if it does change. We're going to keep giving you guys the AP poll every single week. And the more college football fans that we have subscribed to us here at Chat Sports, well, that simply means more college football videos. That's how things tend to work. So if you want more, so speak with a subscription. Hit that big red button. It's totally free. It doesn't cost you anything. All you have to do is go click that big red button. All right, through the AP Top 25, some more here. How about Cincinnati? That defense, guys. It's really good. Now, I'm not sure the committee will put a group of five team in, but I've been very impressed by the Bearcats, the Aggies of AM, Florida as well. BYU, oh, look, another small school program. We will see what happens with Wisconsin given all of their COVID issues if that ends up hurting them in the long run. I'm excited to see Oregon play some football after, you know, not being able to play all year. They're number 12 for now. They got some good talent on that side of the football. We'll see what ends up happening. Oklahoma State, they lost to Texas as the Big 12, at least in terms of the likelihood, had their CFP change take a significant hit with that loss and, frankly, with another Kansas State loss as well. The Big 12 is going to be fun, though, in terms of who will end up winning it. It will be a race all the way down to the end. So who will win the Big 12 this season? We've got quite a few uh, Big 12 uh, alumni here at the Chat Sports. We've got Oklahoma Sam. we got TCU Harrison and Kansas State Brett, and then we got some Oklahoma State people in there. I'm just sitting here watching them all mourn over their own losses. It's fun for me. So let me know who you think will win the Big 12 this season. Got a deal for you guys as well. College football face coverings. They are on sale and available right now, folks. Head over to chatsports.com slash CFB Mass. That's chatsports.com slash CFB Mass. They got a whole bunch of ones for all your favorite teams. If you're going to go to games, that's cool. Don't be the guy who gets caught on screen not wearing their mask and then get ridiculed later. They are all available, and I'll put the link in the comment section and the description as well at chatsports.com slash CFBMass. They go with individual ones to three and four and multi-packs as well. And for a limited time, they are 25% off, so go get yours today. We mentioned the Big 12. Well, there's Iowa State and Oklahoma at number 17 and number 19 here. We'll get to see USC play some football as well. I think name recognition is why they are ranked number 20 because in recent years, eh, the Trojans haven't been the Trojans of the Pete Carroll era. In fact, I think you could argue USC, even though we haven't played them, or haven't seen them play and they're still a top 20 program, is one of the most overrated teams in college football. I think the usual candidates... Texas and Michigan, who we'll get to in just a second, also valid candidates there. But let me know what you guys think. Who do you believe is the most overrated team in college football right now? Michigan, they looked good against Minnesota and then laid an absolute egg against Michigan State, a team that got blown out by Rutgers. I don't know if Michigan caught, got caught looking ahead or a little bit too confident coming in over their win against Minnesota. They plummet from 13 down to 23. Auburn just barely stays ranked at number 24. And then I also want to make note of Texas. They check in at number 22 because they are back in the top 25. So it's time for the age-old question, is Texas back? Type Y for yes or type N for no. I go with this strategy. If Texas wins, then yes, they are back. If they lose, well, then no, they are not. Therefore, Texas is back, at least for this week. That's the AP Top 25, but now we'll take a look at one of the more unusual Heisman Trophy races in recent memory with limited games and some top candidates only just now getting on the field. I've got my top five for you guys, beginning with a wide receiver. Devonta Smith of Alabama, and yes, we'll get to his quarterback here in just a little bit. Look, I have been super impressed by the job that Devonta Smith has done this year. Five, or 56 catches, 759 yards, 8 touchdowns against Mississippi State, 11 grabs, 203 yards, and 4 scores. Yeah, he looks awesome. A name we did not anticipate being on this list when the year began, that is Zach Wilson over at BYU. But guys, he's been awesome. 26 total touchdowns 
against just two interceptions this year. Almost 75% is the number of passes he's completing this year. He's looked incredible. He is a legitimate NFL prospect and, as far as I'm concerned, a legitimate Heisman Trophy contender. Now, what to do with Trevor Lawrence? This one's a little bit tricky here because, look, he's been great this year. 70.7% through the air, almost 2,000 yards, 21 scores against two interceptions, but he's he missed the Boston College game, and he's going to miss the Notre Dame game as well. That would have been one of his biggest opportunities to have that quote-unquote Heisman moment. And, in fact, I wonder, does it actually work in Lawrence's favor if Clemson loses that game? And then makes him look better in the eyes of the Heisman Trophy. He goes, oh, look, look, look at how much Lawrence meant to his team. I don't know how this two-game absence will impact Trevor Lawrence. Remember, Justin Fields has also missed some time, but now he's looking great. So let me know what you guys think. Who will win the Heisman Trophy this season? Number two is Mac Jones. And it's not fair to him. But the way that the Heisman Trophy voting works is there's a lot of name recognition and all of that. And Mac Jones has been steady, reliable, good. In fact, he's been outright great at times. But you know what? His name isn't Tua. And he wasn't viewed as a Tua type of player entering this season. So fair or not, I wonder if that will result in some voters holding that against him come voting time. And at number one, and I'll be honest, one through four is pretty dicey in terms of the actual ordering for me. I'm going to go with Justin Fields because two, through two games, he's been almost perfect. Now, there have been a couple mistakes here as well for Fields here and there. And I wonder if the number of games will hurt him. I think the voters will be smart and go, okay, we'll just do it on like a per game average. We'll get all their stats added up and then look at the per game numbers and identify some differences there, which I think would help benefit Justin Fields in the end. He's going to play, in theory, the rest of the season. I wonder if the two-game absence for Trevor Lawrence is going to be a problem for him. I think Mac Jones is a, is a legit candidate, and I think Zach Wilson remains one of the best sleepers out there. But that's my top five. Feel free to let me know what you guys think in the comments section.